So, Death Note. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It got an American film. And... It's very... Very American film. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, comparisons to this, like, in terms of, like, adaptation. Because it is more of, like... like that you know, thing this... everyone keeps threatening to do to Akira? Say what? <laughs> I said that thing everyone keeps threatening to do to Akira? Oh, yeah. Death Note, I feel I had a vision. I feel like, like the people behind us really gave a shit about it. And I feel like they were really trying to, like, take the premise... Of Death Note, and then just kind of make it their own, you know. And uh, I don't know how to. I didn't hate this movie. In fact, in fact, there's a lot of it I, I enjoyed and I liked. I just, I just can't call it a good movie, unfortunately, because there are a lot of not even like a lot of just okay. structural. Problems. So this should not have been attempted. I think. But now that it has been, mm-hmm. let's look at what we've got. Okay. To start off with, there are a lot of different reasons, methods, means, and goals when you adapt something from one work or one medium to another. Mm-hmm. This is different, therefore it's bad, is not a valid criticism. Correct. This is bad because the acting is really shitty. <laughs> Honestly, was the acting really that shitty for you? A, for a lot of it, yeah. I mean, I, oh. I just... This this is coming from a guy... Maybe that's how teenagers act now? I don't know. Yeah, I don't... Because honestly, like... I feel like the guy playing L was some huge weeb who won a contest. I've seen him in at least one other movie, and he was really good in that. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's... the The biggest flaw in this movie, I feel, is just... It's the dialogue, like, it's it's the dialogue. Because, like, I feel like like a lot of this dialogue is so clunky that I don't even think, well, because I feel that, like Kim That dialogue's games. carrying a lot of weight. It's got a lot of fucking work to do. Yeah. This should not have been attempted. Also, this whole thing that, I mean, like, just fucking said it in the 80s. He wanted to so fucking bad. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe if it were set in the 80s, it wouldn't. Uh, if we were set in the 80s, he wouldn't have, like, all the internet shit that he could do. So, that would really kind of hamstring the narrative. I don't know, man. If, if, if you're going to just do something this different, go ahead and put it in the 80s. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, I think it would hold back the, the story he's trying to tell. I mean, okay, I really like Adam Wingard for, like, the one other movie I've seen of his, which was Your Next. Mm-hmm. And Your Next was this really self-aware home invasion horror film. Which leaned into dark comedy and then just completely shift gears into full blown ex- uh, exploitation survival film where the chick just starts systematically taking out the killers. And it was fucking badass. Uh, also had a great fucking 80s inspired soundtrack. Like, I fucking love the soundtrack. Yeah, it was kind of sound- for 80s synth that I love it. Yeah, like, like, like I've heard people bitch about it, like, oh man, it's fucking. Because people will say, like, like, you know, the script is shit. The actors are shit, the uh, the directing is shit, and the music was shit. And I'm like, like, everything about this is bad. And I'm like... The music was not bad. Yeah, no, like, the music here is fucking great. Uh, if you don't like 80s synth, then yeah, you're not going to like the music. But it's not bad music, and it fits the tone of what they're like trying to go with. Um, uh, the directing... I think the directing is fucking fantastic. Like, I feel bad for Adam Wingard, because like, like he, he's carrying his weight in terms of what his job is. You know, to, this just shouldn't have been attempted. Because I mean, I've seen Death Note work in live action before. You know, I've the, the Japanese made two Death Note movies. And I think that's also something that they had in their advantage that they had two movies. Uh, Death Note was a huge property in Japan, so they were able to make these big, like a two-hour-long movie and a two and a half-hour-long movie. You know, to tell the story of Death Note. And uh, here, you know, Netflix has given them one. 90 minute movie to tell Death Note. And, and he did a very admirable thing with that time. He scaled this shit back. Yeah, no, that, that's what you have to do. And, like, you know, it, it opens up and it's this fucking kid, Light Turner. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I say they just should have set this movie in the 80s, this is the most American high school movie set up in the goddamn world. <laughs> 
they're doing the opening credits, and they might have all just been playing Smells Like Teen Spirit while the cheerleader's smoking. I... Yeah, no, no. It, it leads into And I feel like it's almost an intentional thing. It like, is. I feel... I, I, yeah. Because everything feels very deliberate, at least from a directing standpoint. And I feel like, like Adam Wingard is probably a huge nerd for, like, like that older style of storytelling and... Uh, just like old 90s movies that he probably grew up with and shit, so he was kind of trying to emulate that style. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think he also may have had a thing for Final Destination, because yeah, <laughs> that really shows... Like, this is seriously what happens if the kids from Chronicle end up in Final Destination. Yeah. So, what what I what I really like about how this story went is, like, because you meet Light Turner, and he's... He is not like Gabi. No, not at all. By a mile. Think, think, but but it, it's great. I'm like, oh man, are we really going to have this kid be like? No, we're not. Because no. ten minutes in, this kid is in over his fucking head. Yeah. I, I, I kind of... The first time I watched the movie, because this is my second time watching it. Uh, like, the first time I watched it, I was kind of jarred by just how quickly things were going. Like, because it's... The Death Note drops. Ryuk shows up. He has his first kill. You know, he fucking meets, you know, Mia, and all that bullshit happens. It's just, it, it was jumping from moment to moment to moment. And, like, this time around, I, like, I guess, I don't know, I was, like, kind of prepared for it, and it wasn't anywhere near jarring. I was just like, okay. Like, no, okay, like, yeah, everything's set up, and it's just, it is just kind of moving from one beat to the next. It's just doing it within a fairly short amount of time, because they have 90 fucking minutes to put the story in. Uh... I, I love when like I, okay, a lot of people hate this, but uh, and but when when Ryuk shows up and Light starts screaming like a little girl, that's the best fucking scene in the movie. Yeah, I love that moment, and it's just it's so fucking great. Like he's just like because that is the exact sound I made when that scene happened in Insidious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like <laughs> yeah, no, like 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 I you know yeah, if, if I saw. That in front of me? Yeah. No. I'd scream. I'd cry. I'd probably piss myself a little. I, we should say, in case you get struck by lightning before being able to finish this video, Willem Dafoe as Ryuk is one of the best goddamn things to happen to anyone in ten years. Yeah. That shit was amazing. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> he, he is fucking choice goofy is so fun. and threatening. And yeah. He is definitely more threatening than he is in the manga and the anime. Mm-hmm. So I guess we should say, like, like we are fans of Death Note. Like, uh, you know, we were reading the manga before it was cool, back before it had an anime. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, you know, I'm a huge fan of the manga. Um, I've owned the anime twice now. Once for DVD, once on Blu-ray. Uh, I have the fucking Japanese films. Yeah, you know, I I am a Death Note fan. I tried to watch that really shitty TV drama that came out in Japan a couple of years ago. Man, that thing was fucking dog shit. (laughs) If you guys want to see bad Death Note, try to go watch that fucking TV drama that came out like a year or so ago. That was fucking horrible. Okay, so Uh, I just... There's a lot to recommend in this property. I just just want to get through a few of the things that are just awful. Yeah. Um, The the whole opening with, with, with... Light Turner is it's it's just forced and terrible and like oh those two kids are beating up a guy yeah, and he witnesses justice and then hey don't touch her and oh that the jock beat me up and no one understands me and then he fucking tells the principal like don't you want to put a stop to the people who make it hard for everyone else I'm an authority figure and I'm not listening to you <laughs> yeah um <laughs> oh I wanted to kill myself yeah I mean I will say. The American school system does tend to turn a blind eye to kids who get fucking picked on and beat up and shit. And I will say, I do love the scene where he goes, well, I mean, you're over 18, so if you punch me, that'll be child abuse. And you just, boom! Like, that scene is great. Him him being like, I need to protect this girl. They just, and, oh my god. I mean, like, Mia just isn't having his shit. They were veering into Joan and Vasquez territory of the cartoonish darkness of mundane life. Yeah. But, and once again, though, I really wonder, like, how intentional was this and how, like... I, it might have been, like, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> well, uh, damn it, I can't remember the director's name. Adam Wingard? Wingard. I'm like, Wingardium Leviosa is not that guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 Adam Wingard, directed Death Note movie, he's like, uh, okay, so we just Googles what kind of kids read Death Note. <laughs> oh, okay, and he just laser-targeted that shit. Yeah, I know. 
Um, I actually kind of like like Turner as as a character in this um, because as soon as he was immediately out of his depth, I started liking his character. Yeah, yeah, because because once he gets a death note, and because it's not like you know he tests the book out and he's like, oh, I'm going to use this for justice. You know, no, like like he's just like you know whatever, leave, leave me alone, weird monster man. It's just like go ahead, write his name in the book. It's just like uh, I don't have a pen. <laughs> You have a pen. And he, he does it. And he, when it happens, you see that look of, oh my god, what the fuck have I done? And then... Uh, and then Lady Macbeth shows up. Well, I mean, he, he kills the, the, the one guy who... Uh, oh, yeah. Killed, yeah. Uh, I, but I, I mean, kinda, who wouldn't? Yeah, I, I do kind of like you know, that he had a couple of things. Like, yeah, he has Rhea pushing him. You know, there's the whole thing with his, you know... The, the, the person that was responsible for his mother dying. So, you know, that kind of also just... It, it, it's these little baby steps he's taking into becoming Kira. Because this yeah, is really... He, 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 really, he's less Kira and more the Boondock Saints for a while. Yeah, honestly, this whole thing feels more like a Kira origin story. Because he doesn't really come into, like, being full tilt Kira until, like, the very end. Where it just, like, you know, cat and mouse, Matt Master Manipulator and fucking, you know, twisting... Shit around, like, bending the rules to the Death Note to whatever he needs it to be. Uh, so, yeah, like, like, he is just kind of, you know, he's doing it because he feels like, yeah, like, yeah, I want to help people. This is going to help you. He doesn't even have, like, like, like the American underdog. Like, oh, man, everybody's, oh, my God. I just, because, like, in the original Death Note, you got Light Yagami. And Light Yagami is fine. He's this super smart kid. He's not a delinquent. He he doesn't get into detention in the beginning of the Power Rangers movie. Because <laughs> that's what this is. It's that same shit. I mean... You know what? Yes. That is a lot of the same shit. And... But this is so much better than that goddamn Power Ranger movie. Because <laughs> that was... That was like two and a half hours of fucking boring bullshit. Like, like take... Take that fucking, like, opening scene and then stretch that out into the entire fucking Power Ranger movie and then have a Power Ranger sequence in the last 15 minutes and that's the Power Ranger movie. There's, it does it, like, in the t- first 10 minutes and then it just goes into just doing all the things that the Death Note movie was planning, you know, like, just kind of being the Death Note movie. Death Note movie in air quotes. But yeah, uh... I feel like Light Turner's dad wandered in from a Tarantino film somewhere offset. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's intense as shit. Yeah, like he's great. Like, yeah, there are some legit great fucking moments in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, like like first off, like like the the directing Adam Wingard, like he carries his weight in that regard. He he, you know, every shot like looks really stylized, looks really great. Um, you, you see like uh, very specific shots to convey information to the audience, like whatever L. Bust in the lights house, and Mia's like on the and like the camera kind of pans over like me on the stairs. And you see her get up, so that way it's to indicate to the audience, oh yeah, she's going up there to go get the death note. Just and there's little things like that, or like whenever lights writing all those names in the finale. By the way, there's gonna be spoilers out the asses. So if you haven't seen, it's on fucking Netflix. Go goddamn watch it if you don't if you care about spoilers. Uh, but yeah, whenever he's uh, writing names in the note in the notebook at, near the end, and you have that like, pause. And then he starts writing again, and you know it's him putting in Mia's name, and you know it's just that there's like little subtleties that he puts into the direction that I really care for. And like I said, like you know Adam Wingard really car- car- uh, carries his weight in terms of being the director. Uh, I think the soundtrack is fucking awesome. Uh, it's I just, feel like he used that soundtrack like ketchup. Like if I if I just put more eighty synth on, no one will notice. <laughs> So, okay, you've, you've, you've got Light Turner, and, and you've got this L. Yes. And they, they are examples of two very different attempts at doing these characters. Because he just fucking changed Light completely to fit him in this movie. Yes. He didn't for L, and it does not work. I, I mean, he, he does take some... I mean, the the this only L- reason I could halfway take this L seriously is because I know real L. This guy's just ridiculous. We don't have time to build up cred for him to be this retarded. Yeah. He talks weird. It's, it's unsettling the whole time. But then, like, like at the end, when they start changing his character, it starts working better. 
Yeah, no, like, like I feel like because they were trying to lean into the eccentricities of L without giving you time to really get to know L. Yeah, he does come off really weird, um, and I think once they just they, they they lean more into that intensity of his character, pretty much from the moment Watery mm-hmm. is yeah, that's like what he, it's good. Yeah, that's what he is just like. And I fucking love that scene where he's just like, you know, if Watery is a return to me, blah, blah, And just, you know, like, when fucking Light's dad grabs Al, puts his arm on his fucking throat, like, you threaten my son again, I'll fucking kill you. It is, it's a oh. very American death note. It's a lot faster, it's a lot louder, it's a lot more violent. Yeah. Um... Which, I mean, I'm okay with a lot of these things. Yeah, I mean, it was... And this is what I, what I mean when I'm talking about adaptation. They they adapted the bones of this story and made a very different thing out of it. Yeah, it reminds me kind of like... And this is maybe a really weird comparison, but just Ninja Turtles. Every, every incarnation of Ninja Turtles is completely different. It takes the, the framework. Like, you know, four turtles, hit by ooze, trained by a rat, fights a ninja uh, in his ninja clan... And what they do with that framework every time is something completely different. Here, it's just I, I kind of like I kind of get that same feel, feel where it's just like you take the framework, you change the location, you you tweak the characters, you alter them, uh, you trim the fact that it's a ninety minute movie, and you know scale everything back down. And yeah, like I I, I kind of dug what he did with this, you know, because it, it's I feel like he could have used a couple more hours, but <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like. There's... There is, I mean, it's like, there is zero cat and mouse in this game. No. I, 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 I kind of love that. Because I'm like, I am not, I, the, the movie opens up and Light Turner starts doing his shit. And I'm like, this kid is not smart enough to, and, and then L shows up in a diner and goes, you're Kira. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, like, like and he doesn't, I, I kind of like how he doesn't directly say he is Kira, but he completely... Because he's just so fucking out of his depth. Yeah, no, like, like this light... Because I... He definitely feels like a more grounded human being because that, because L, or light being like this weird super genius, it does kind of make him come off weird and detached. He's almost like a fucking... Like, he's almost Doc Doom levels of fucking superhuman intelligence. I love it. And it is great. It is great for yeah, the story. We just story. do not have time for that shit yeah, in yeah. a 90-minute Netflix movie. Yeah, and that is the problem. Like, if this has been... I wish this had been a, like, a 10-episode Netflix series. I would have ate this shit up. Mm. It would have been fucking great. Like, you know, these characters... As, as, these as long as um, Kristen Stewart's Misa had died in, like, the first two episodes. Yeah. I I like her... I, I, okay. I like Mia, like, how she is always, like, kind of... She is the enabler. Like, you know, she is really the one... Who is kind of the actual Kira of this story. Like, if, if this story hadn't happened to her, she would have ended up in The Craft, like, next week. <laughs> yeah. And, like, she fucking... And I love it. Like, Light, Ta- Light Turner is a fucking moron. He's like, I have a notebook that can kill people. I am suddenly very attracted to you as a person. I don't see any red flags here. Yeah. Kill your dad. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, no. Like... I do love the fact that, like, you know, that, that this light is, you know, because light in the uh, manga, he's very, <sighs> light Nagami, he will do anything to achieve his goals. Like, light Nagami, like, oh, FBI agents are, are tracking me and they're tracking all the Kira suspects. Time to kill all the FBI agents. Oh, well. You know. And if his dad had ever, you know, pulled the shit that he does, he would have killed his dad in that manga. Not not even a fucking, like, uh, oh, sorry, dad, you had to go and fucking force my hand on this. He's just smart enough to actually use his father to his advantage. Yeah. Uh, here, you know, this light, though, he's just, he, he can't bring himself to do that. He's like, he's not going to kill. And But Mia has no fucking problem with it. She, and I love how she just takes out, who we find out later is Ray Penbar, and just and then writes it all in. And I do love the little misdirection where you think it's Ryuk, because mm-hmm. it is just a thing. It's like they learned early, like the rules are a little different here. Yeah, so so you don't know that Ryuk can't do that shit in this universe, or if he can, we don't know. So when these guys get you know start taking take it out, and he accuses Ryuk, and Ryuk isn't denying it, it's a really clever little misdirect when you find out. Oh, that fucking bitch! Yeah, Ryuk is a lot more adversarial here. 
Yeah. And it's it, it's good. I like it. Oh, yeah. I fucking love that scene where uh, when L first reveals himself on television and Rook's just like, I like him. I'm rooting for him now. <laughs> it's just like, you son of a bitch, Rook. Uh, yeah. There's... I said, like, you know, there, there is things like this because people keep treating it like it is the worst fucking thing ever. It's complete garbage. And if you don't like the actors, I can I can understand that. I feel like it's more of the problem of the script. This, the, 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 the dialogue, I feel, is what is holding this movie back. Mm-hmm. The concept of the story, I think, is fine. It is just the dialogue weighs everything down. This is so much better than it could have been. It is so much better than it could have been. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like, the, this, and I feel like a lot of this on the internet, it's like, oh, they made a Death Note movie with a white kid. Well, we all hate it. Yeah, and that's not this film's problem. Like, like I feel like if it just had stronger dialogue, if the dialogue weren't so ham-fisted and awkward and forced throughout half of it, you'd have a... You know, the reception would probably be a bit better than a guy. I'm pretty sure people would still hate it because... It's Death Note, it's Americanized, it isn't cat and mouse game stuff, and people wouldn't just be able to judge it as a film. Because, you know, every adaptation, I feel, I feel like, I feel like American film adaptations have spoiled goddamn people, because shit like Lord of the Rings, okay, yeah, like, you know, Peter Jackson, you did a great thing for, uh, book nerds around the world. You have fucking ruined adaptations, because now if anything takes any liberties, it's 100% fucking garbage. <laughs> And like, I'm I'm not even really seeing. It, it's not the hate that gets me. It's the dismissal. There is too much interesting in this product to be dismissed by airheaded shitbags on the internet. See, the thing is, though, like I am seeing hate, though I am seeing just people outright, like you know, like I mean, shit. Dan and Bob apparently watched yesterday. They were tweeting about it, and Dan was saying it was the worst movie he had seen in years, or seen recently at least. And I'm like, motherfucker, we saw Ghost in the Shell together, to which he thinks Ghost in the Shell's better. I, you know, because this year alone, I have watched, like, the three Ronnie Kenshin films. I think that was all this year. Was, like, the three Ronnie Kenshin films, uh, the, um, the first Attack on Titan film, the American Ghost in the Shell film, and now this. And I would say this was better than, well, okay. I would say it's as good as the first Ronnie Kenshin film. Because I feel like that was a little bit more solid. But the other two Ronnie Kenshin films are overblooded clusterfucks that try way too hard to be faithful to the source material and just shove in everything. Attack on Titan was just weird and bizarre. And fucking uh, Ghost in the Shell was completely uninspired. It's it's functional. It's not necessarily bad. It's just boring and, and uninspired because it just takes... It takes iconic image imagery from Ghost in the Shell, uh, applies it to the story of RoboCop and a little bit of the you stole my identity, now I'm going to get it back plotline bullshit. Uh, very Americanizing with that as well. Uh, and just kind of toss in as much iconography as it can. Like, look, you remember this thing from Ghost in the Shell? Remember this scene and this scene? I mean, Yeah, I've just... been watching movies for the last 15 years. Yeah, yeah. I have seen that scene from Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, and... Uh, one of the and one of the big problems that thing had was like it would because it completely changed the story. Like here's this iconic scene, iconic scene from the original Ghost in the Shell movie in live action, with none of the thematic depth that it had originally because we changed the story. Like here, it doesn't try to fucking adapt any one specific moment from Death Note. Like it it it, it, it takes you know like, like I said the framework, the idea, smart kid, smart ish. I mean. By American, the by, kind of kid that sits around and tells people how smart he is. Yeah, he's that asshole. Like you know, that guy gets a notebook that can kill people. There's a death god who's just kind of whispering in his ear and shit. And then there's like this fucking super detective who's coming after his ass. I also I love the idea that because um, they never address. Well, I mean, at one point Ryu said like a death god, so the multiplicity of them. But yeah, like how in in, in the original Death Note, you know. I can't remember. Did like Rick drop it on accident, or oh, he 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 dropped it randomly in the human world. Yeah, and he wrote the. He, in fact, he didn't even know it was going to land in Japan because he wrote the instructions in English because uh, that was like the most common language, I guess, around the world. Yeah, uh, but that was like the language people most likely know. So, I 
I, I, just, I love the idea that in this universe, this thing's been getting passed around. Yeah, that's one thing. And I people really are just like. fucking around with it. Yeah, I do like the fact that just, until Rio kills him. Yeah, like Rip just kind of just drops a notebook to people, and the light just happened to be one. Instead of it's, light it's, just being yeah. like like the chosen Messiah who just happened to fucking grab this amazing magical notebook. In this version, it's just he's one of potentially many. And the first one to just take it in this fucking direction. Yeah, no. Like, like there were four movies before this. Like, Saturday Night B-movie slasher films of people getting Final Destination before a demon ate them. (laughs) Light's like, but what if I fucking boondock say it's everyone? The point at which I absolutely love this film is from the point where uh, Mia fucking tells him that, uh, that Light Turner's heart will stop at midnight. And it just rides that momentum all the way to the goddamn finale of that film. Just the, the fucking, uh, him, uh, running to, like, like, yeah, it's, it's him running to, like, start putting, like, looking up fucking pedophiles and shit, trying to, like, write all these names in the book. And he's in just full panic mode. Just the, the, the music starts, you know, building up and getting more intense. The tension starts ratcheting. The police are coming after him because fucking Watcher, he's dead. L isn't having any more of this shit. Fucking L grabs his fucking weird future gun. I don't know what the hell is up with that gun, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's coming after his ass. And then it's just like, you know, meet me at the Ferris wheel. And then, like, the fucking chase scene happens with him and L. And it's fucking great shit. And just what he has, I love, I love what he, what he has him cornered. And Light's gonna try to reason with him. And then that one guy comes out, just like, like, this man is Kira. I'm trying, it's like, you know, uh, don't get involved. And he just clocks him out and goes, Lord Kira. It's just, I love that moment. I was like, oh my god, you're a fucking Kira, Kira worshiper. Awesome. Because, like, I feel like, you know, like, in America, we would totally be down for, like, you know, I, I feel like the majority of your average Americans, we found out that there was some weird person going around killing murderers or shit and bringing down the crime. And we'd be like, yeah, man, fuck that guy. Yeah, but he's a foreigner. <laughs> True. See, the thing is, though, then we probably look at it, it's like, see, Japan's getting done with America doesn't have the balls to do. <laughs> Hashtag make America great again. <laughs> and, I, and I do just love how he just goes, like, full light Yagami at the end, where he just, you know, like, this person's going to do this, this person's going to do this. And, and you know, he, he fucking plans it out in, in this really smart way to where it takes Mia out of the picture... And it completely absolves him of any guilt because the Kira murders are still happening. So there's, he's in fucking, he's in a fucking coma. So yeah. Because I mean, in the, in the same way they scaled the uh, light down, you know, they, they scale L down because you know in the original, you know, Light's doing all this crazy bullshit. To, I've been in prison for a billion days, and all the murders are still happening. <laughs> Everyone, like, has seen L be brilliant enough to this point where, like, he's in a hotel room going, I don't know how the fuck he's doing it. Maybe blah, 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 blah. He's just bullshitting. Everybody's like, okay, we'll give you another couple of months of keeping this Japanese citizen in prison. <laughs> this guy, they're like, you need to get the fuck out of town before we kneecap you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Like, 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 the American government is just not dealing with his shit. It's, just like, <laughs> it's like, you can't keep fucking accusing this kid... Yeah. Because he's not like, he's not fucking Sherlock in this one. He's just a pretty good detective. <laughs> yeah. And I, I wonder how. Because I've heard people say that in this version, uh, Light or L is, like, L's retarded. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see that because I don't feel like at any point he makes a really stupid decision. Yeah, he, he just ain't L. Yeah, it's just, yeah, he. He, he never gets the opportunity to do the intense cat and mouse game shit. Yeah, there's just, and, there's no time for that. Yeah, and the story just, you know, like, in this version of the story, he doesn't need to be as sneaky and shit. He, yeah, you know, he just kind of comes right out. It's just like, I know you're Kira. Like, you know, you didn't kill your dad. You're fucking, you fucked up, son. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I got you. I just need to figure out how you did it, and you're done, son. <laughs> and, so yeah. I, don't, I just I, I don't get the uh, the hate for this one. Like I mean I understand people if people say like oh, yeah, I didn't like this movie. That's fine. It's like if you want yeah it wasn't Death Note. No it isn't Death Note. Uh, if people said 
yeah, it wasn't my thing. Or like, you know, it, 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 this way, the dialogue is really kind of, is just kind of shitty and ham-fisted. Yeah, all right. You know, I feel like there's enough interesting in this movie to warrant its existence. Mm-hmm. And as you said, it could have been a lot worse. Shit, we've seen mainstream Hollywood with two, like a $200 billion fucking budget blow a Batman and Superman movie. The easiest fucking thing in the world, and they made it a fucking travesty. Consider this. This was actually a difficult thing to fucking adapt. The Death Note Netflix movie Mm -hmm. is better than Iron Fist. Yes. Without a doubt. What world is this? Man. Yeah, that's... Iron Fist was not that fucking hard to do and fuck it up. Yeah. Adam Wingard. Uh, like, I feel bad. Like, he, I, he is the person I feel worst about, like, worst for. This is gonna stick to his career for a yeah, bit. Yeah. Because it's gonna be that thing. Everyone's gonna remember him as that guy who fucked up the Death Note movie. It's just like, no, he's the guy who made an made admirable... Made the Death Note movie good looking. <laughs> yeah, he made an admirable attempt at trying to make a Death Note movie. Because he didn't even write the script. The script was someone else. He can't control that. He can't rewrite the entire fucking thing. Shit. So, yeah, no. Like, I feel bad for him because he's a really good director. And if you could just look at just the cinematography of here, like, like how he spaces shots, how he uses lights and shadows and just yeah. colors. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> he, he's a really good director. And I think he needs... I just want to see him on a better project. God damn it. You know, if you haven't watched it, I mean, we just spoiled... The majority of it, go check it out. Uh, if you've never seen Death Note before, um, do that after you've watched this movie, so that way you don't come in with preconceived notions and other things. If you're a fan of Willem Dafoe, this is some good Willem Dafoe. There's bad Willem Dafoe? I mean... I mean... Like, like, what are you gonna like try to break out? Like Daybreakers? Cause I'll punch it if you say Daybreakers. Oh my God, no, man, nobody fucking remembers Daybreakers. Yeah, that just that just happened. Like nobody remembers Daybreakers. What the hell? Nobody acknowledged Daybreakers when it came out, other than us. Uh-huh. We're gonna get like th- like at least a comment. And you're going, yeah, finally someone who remembers Daybreakers, man. That movie was great. If that guy also remembers the Ninja High School comics, I think we're gonna start hanging out. Ninja High School? What? Oh. The hell is Ninja? When when we're done here, I am going to show you the true old school. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not a like I said, it's not a good movie, but I think it's an ambitious one. I think it tries. Yeah, I don't think it should have been attempted, but under these circumstances, good job. Yeah, 